Uh, having said that, there is also actually a time when Jesus is going to come as a man of war himself in a physical war, which will take place at the end of days. And in some ways, the events of Exodus have a parallel with what's going to happen at the end of time. Uh, the plagues which come upon Israel, uh, Egypt are typolo typologically fit in with the, the judgments which fall on the earth in the Great Tribulation period. Uh, and also at the second coming of Jesus, we see that he's going to come this time to make war with the beast and with his armies. And as with Pharaoh and his armies, this will be a literal physical war in which the armies of the Antichrist uh, will be utterly routed and defeated by the Lord as they gather at Armageddon, uh, uh, which will then bring release from the, to the earth from the powers of darkness, and Jesus will then reign in the millennial kingdom. But we see that at the second coming of Jesus, Jesus is actually coming second time as a man of war, first of all to make war against the forces of darkness which are coming against him. Revelation chapter 19 says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beasts, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Uh, now, because I believe that the Bible is actually literally true, I believe that's going to happen, that there will be a gathering, a warfare, uh, in which the beast and the false prophet will gather uh, the armies together against the Lord at the end of days. In fact, it says his, his battle will not be actually against Israel, it'll be against the Lord. And somehow Satan thinks if he can gather all these armies together, he's going to... Uh, fight and defeat uh, the returning Lord Jesus. Well, that's a total delusion because when Jesus comes back, it's actually no contest. But it is a war. It takes place literally on the earth. And Satan, demon powers are defeated by the Lord Jesus. And he then takes up his reign on the earth in the millennial kingdom, which will be the thousand-year reign of Christ, which we read about in Revelation chapter 20. And I think there is actually a sort of parallel between the Exodus event and this. It's an event in which God shows that when it comes to a showdown with the forces of darkness, God is going to actually take physical action against them and he will defeat the powers of darkness and he will then set up his messianic kingdom.